So what happens is the acid goes and hits here. Acid goes and hits here. So when the acid hits the epithelium, the acid obviously is going to damage the epithelium. Immediately your metaplasia is not going to happen. It will not happen immediately. It will take time for your barrage esophagus to come. There is a quite few years of just GRD and reflex esophagitis. Only a long and untreated esophagitis will have your metaplasia coming into place. Till that time it's just going to be reflex esophagitis with a history of heartburn. That's all. So when there's a damage to the squamous epithelium, see you damage any epithelium in the body, what will happen to it? It will repair, right? It obviously will repair. That is the template for any epithelial damage. So when this repairs, I need a little bit of increase in cell division. Because repair will obviously be associated with cell division, which is nothing but the basal cells of the squamous epithelium will undergo hyperplasia. That's one finding for me. Second, when this is damaged, obviously I'll have inflammation as well. Inflammation will definitely happen. So these two are the key findings what I'm going to look in microscopy. I'll add very characteristic findings, criteria to uh, see what is reflex esophagitis very, very soon. Fine. Now, let's go to the gross. When you take the gross appearance of GRD, okay, the gross appearance of GRD, there are two things for me. When it's an acute onset, if the person's having an uh, endoscopy done, you might see just erythematous area. So erythema will be appearing gross. It can be either diffuse or patchy based on the disease, fine. Based on the chronicity also, it affects, okay. When it's chronic GRD, there can be a little bit of nodularity, okay. So when the patient is saying there's a GRD for let's say 8-10 years, there can be nodular appearance. The reason why I want you to put this up here is, don't always think if it's a nodule, it's a neoplasm. There's a possibility because any chronic inflammation lab, tissue destruction, healing by fibrosis. That fibrosis itself can give the nodularity. Keep an open mind when you have a tiny swelling in the, or a polypodal swelling or some swelling in the esophagus. Keep in mind, as for the history of GRD, it can also be in chronic GRD grossly, fine. Now let's come back to microscopy. Like I said, there are three things that are very, very important for me. Three unique findings for GRD. All of them, like I said, it's due to a reparative change. The first thing for me is, basal cell hyperplasia this is very very unique basal cell hyperplasia is kind of diagnostic of grd so when you take a normal basal epithelium of an uh, you can see here maybe i'll draw this here and we'll look into the microscopy soon when you see this normal basal epithelium so normally it's around one to four layer thickness or let's say approximately 10 percent of the entire thickness of the squamous epithelium of the esophagus if it goes beyond 15 percent i'm going to call that a basal cell hyperplasia beyond 15% of the thickness. So whenever there's in lots and lots of hyperplasia, what happens second is your lamina propria elongation or the reti ridges kind of thing, it becomes elongated, right? So the lamina propria papillary appearance will be there or the lamina propria elongation will be there. I'll just give you a brief overview of what do I mean by this. So it's like this, right? Normally esophagia is going to be like this, the normal esophagus. I won't have a deep indentation like what you see in skin. So now because of the excess amount of hyperplasia of the basal epithelium, it becomes more thick. If you remember psoriatic changes, almost similar thing, right? That same thing. So what happens because of regeneration, the lamina propria is going to have a bit of a papillary elongation. It's nothing but an elongation, that's all. If you look at this, just give me a second. And look at this. It's just an elongation because the basal epithelium is trying to regenerate and trying to heal. Third and the most important thing is inflammation. Obviously, inflammatory cells will be there. So inflammatory cells can be a combination. You can see neutrophils, you can see eosinophils, you can see lymphocytes, lots of them, right? It's always mixed in inflammation. Don't keep in mind that, okay, I'm seeing uh, neutrophils should be an acute process. Lymphocytes is a chronic process. Anything can be there. You can see them in between the squamous epithelium. There's an image from Mawson Dawson. There's a type of epithelial cell called a squiggle cell. Okay, Squiggle cell is almost characteristic of your... Uh, reflex esophagitis. Squiggle cell is nothing but a lymphocyte. It's a lymphocyte like you can see the name squiggle. It just goes in between the epithelium. Let's see this. See this image. A beautiful one, right? You can see the squamous epithelium here. And can you see this? It's actually the lymphocyte which is trying to go and penetrate between the epithelium. This cell is called as a squiggle cell. This is a, a very classical hallmark. Like I said, you can see eosinophil as well. Even in this biopsy, it's always a mixed inflammatory infiltrate. Please don't keep in mind that, okay, the GERD should have an acute inflammation. You might have acute, you might have mixed, you might have eosinophil as well. Because eosinophil is one of the important finding because uh, when we go to eosinophilic esophagitis, the most important differential diagnosis in microscopy is GRD. I'll tell you how to take care of that, how to diagnose them very, very soon, fine. That's about your reflexes of agitis, fine.